What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jerry Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Shows. Brian, the dust has settled. Everybody has gotten a moment to sort of rethink or think about the reveal at Comic-Con that Robert Downey Jr. is playing. I had to go back to listen to it. Victor Von Doom. Brian, I've had a chance to listen to all to listen to all the theories and speculation as to what storyline they're they're going to be going with and what they're trying to do brian it all makes sense to me you know there's one that makes more sense one that he is still born tony stark but his parents are disposed of very early and he's adopted by the von doom family and he takes on the the, the doom name that brian for me it's like okay whatever right yeah that's what you want to go with okay listen my sort of surprise and like disappointment at the choice has nothing to do really with robert downey jr as an actor as a performer whatever that has nothing to do with him per se my thing was wanting to see somebody else somebody else play this role i don't want to be distracted with the memory of tony stark how great it was to now have to switch and and, and take this opportunity when he does come on screen which will probably be fantastic for a credit scene called a long time ago and we're still not going to get a taste of that till we see his movie we're only going to probably see if you saw like we just talked about the cape crusader and the joker coming in right and him saying something we'll probably get something similar to that we won't get any real determining uh instances of saying yes that's victim of doom we may we, we may not until he until avengers doomsday it'll be pretty impressive brian if robert Downey jr can pull off what we think he's trying to pull off and playing a different character and still being still being praised for his performance um similarly to how it, he has been attached to the name Tony Stark for all these years. I just wanted somebody else, not him. I get what they're trying to do. It makes sense in terms of he's not going to be playing this character for a lot longer than the two movies that they're going to be paying him millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars, which was released already. You already know. Brian. Yeah, let's get to that because yeah. I think that matters to this discussion. Yes. Go ahead. So I'm 100% with you on this. I think there's a lot of questions. You know, one of the questions we speculated on our last show because we did we had just come we were literally recording as Comic-Con was still going on was was he playing Victor Von Doom? Was he playing Tony Stark? And they said he's playing Victor Von Doom. But I think you outlined a key point, which is why would we take that at face value? <laughs> Like there's we're, we're we're so far into the multiverse and trying to fix the multiverse that like and now you're off you're kind of off the the comics storyline in some ways anyway so like they could say he's playing Victor Von Doom he could be, they could do anything they could say at the end of it we could get there and be like well this wasn't the real Victor Von Doom there's another one like they could do anything so don't just assume that like hey if I go read the Latvian history I'm gonna get exactly what Robert Downey Jr. is doing that I don't think. And that's why I think the terms of the agreement matter to this conversation. Because they ain't thought that far ahead. <laughs> and if they say they have, look, if you read Rise of the MCU, you, it is a, one of the most amazing themes is how little they actually thought that far ahead or how well it seemed like things flowed. Every step of the way, they kind of weren't thinking that far ahead. They were much more focused on getting that next movie, that next thing right, which served them very well. But if you're going to sit there and tell me that the motivation for this is creative, I have a lot of things to sell you. Because <laughs> there's no way. This is a commercial move, and I totally understand why it's happening. I just don't have to love it. Now, here's what came out after about what Robert Downey Jr. is getting. And then I have a question for you about this because I am fish-eyed about the whole thing. So he's getting a base salary, base salary of $50 million per film. 
plus back end on the box office. So you could probably do the math if like this Avengers movies are like a one and a half, two billion, two billion plus, like he is making nine figures per movie. Easy. <laughs> okay. So that's number one. But if that wasn't enough, he's got a charter jet. Which from was home. which was part of the deal last time. So he gets that from home to the production. He gets yeah. his own security team and he gets a quote trailer encampment. Listen, he's a star, right? Yeah. And he's the star in the MCU. I get it. They're going to treat him as such. And they should. The Russo brothers related story are getting uh, $40 million each per film. And they get additional payouts. If the films gross seven fifty and a billion boy, we're aiming low. Um, so Here's my question to you, and I got to ask this question. So Doom, <laughs> Doom spends a lot of time in a mask. Do you think Robert Downey, how much do you think Robert Downey is physically going to be involved with this production versus pulling a Pedro Pascal Mandalorian and just lending his vocal talents? Here's, a, here's, here's what I, even if he's not, even if he's in the mask all the time and he's not, I don't care. I just want to see Doom. From what I can see, people posting up, <clears throat> people posting Doom and putting Robert Downey Jr. in his face on it. If that is a Doom that we're going to get, I don't want it. I don't yeah. want Judge Dredd. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Great point. Great analogy. Yes. Of like betraying, betraying the identity of a I character. I wrote in, Service a, in, a, in actor's ego. Yes. I wrote in a, in a, in a, comment section on an Instagram post where it was Robert Downey Jr. in the cloak and all that stuff and it showed his face. And I said, the fact that they're showing Doom's face in almost everything that we see now is disrespectful to the Doom character. I totally agree with you. So let's see, Brian, if what we see, on, what we saw on that night of the reveal of Robert Downey Jr. being Doom will be similar in terms of who we see in the movie without the mask. I'm not there for that. Because the reason I asked the question about the Pascal Mandalorian thing is if Robert Downey Jr. is mostly the voice of Doom and getting all this money and perks, I could see him being perfectly fine with being masked most of the time. I hope that's the case. If he's physically going to the set for four months, six months at a time for these movies, are we sure he's okay being behind a mask for most of his role, given his notoriety and his star power and his ego, quite frankly? I'm more skeptical, which makes me think the Did more you... he's on set, the more likely we are to see Doom's face a lot. I'm scared that we're gonna get the Robert Downey Jr. that thought. What's that movie, Doctor Doolittle? Doolittle, where he had saying a lot of. Well, that'll be a very like unfortunate, that. memeable parallel if Doctor Doom turns into Doctor Doolittle. <laughs> I'm just saying, Brian. I don't want Robert Downey Jr. to really take control of the storyline and what needs to be said because this is, you know. I don't know how much of Doom he knows. Hopefully he does read up on a lot of Doom because Doom has a lot of classic lines and he just say stuff in a way not to be funny. Yeah. But he says it in a way to make his presence known. My fear actually, um, and then we can talk about upside, but my fear is that he Sherlock Holmes this. If you guys have ever seen the Guy Ritchie Sherlock Holmes that he does, which comes after Iron Man 1, it's kind of like his next big tentpole after Iron Man comes out. Like there's a character that has a long lineage in obviously in stories, but in television and film. And it's basically just Robert Downey Jr. doing Tony Stark with a fit, kind of a hint of a British accent. Like the movie's not terrible but I don't think he's very good as Holmes because he's not trying to be Sherlock Holmes. He's trying to riff on himself with a little bit of Holmes's quirks. That's my prime fear with this role is that he, he does the research and then says, but it has to be Done me. My way. Like, it has to be my, like that. 
And now that's what I'm afraid to of that too. Is, yeah, like the, the counter to that is, look, he is one of the most gifted actors of the last 50, 30, 40 years. He is. Does he have it in him to do, you know, a different accent and a sadistic villain and a sinister villain and a, you know, a brilliant villain? Yes, he does have it in him. The question to me is, does he want it? Does he want to transform? Does he want to do what Ledger did and shock everyone with what he comes up with? Or does he want to be Robert Downey Jr. riding to the rescue in another role for the MCU? I, I, I don't think we, we can't know the answer to that question, but I think all of this hinges because look, here's the other thing. Do you think anyone from Kevin Feige to the Russos is in any position to give him a note on anything at this point? Absolutely not. So whatever he comes back with, that's it's what they're going to go roll with. <laughs> that's and it. That's what's scary. That's it. And that's what's scary, yo. He's on that stage revealing himself to the world to be doomed, not because everybody else thought this was a good idea. It's because Robert Downey Jr. thought it was a good idea. That's because and he because, wanted that. Well, and in fairness, and because I think, I think, listen, what they did is very consistent with Bob Iger's marching orders in every other department. And we know that Iger has said publicly his number one focus was getting Marvel back on track. And what has Iger been prioritizing in his other franchises? Sequels, familiar, right? Frozen 3, Frozen 4, Moana 2. So bringing the Russos back and bringing Robert Downey Jr. back is the Marvel version of that. You can't get more true to Iger's new mantra for the Mouse House than what they did. But again, not a creative decision at all. That is a monetary decision. That is a, we got two Avengers movies coming up and they can't do, they can't be Justice League. They, they can't at the box office. They that is cannot. a true end. That is a true end. So that's the motive. That's what I think. I, I, we can go pro, we can go calm, but that is the motivation. Whether we like it or not, that is what's driving this. And it's put Downey in this enormous position of power where he's going to make the decision about what this character becomes. And that makes me nervous. Because in Oppenheimer, which got him the Oscar, Christopher Nolan gave him notes. I will tell you, I can guarantee oh, Christopher yeah. Nolan's a powerful enough director and Downey respects him enough that they could have a conversation about how he was going to portray his character. And there's still some vintage Downey in there, but there's other aspects of that personality too. I just, so it may be great. It may be, you know, it may be the last carving on his Mount Rushmore, but it could also be an it could absolute be bad. train wreck and they couldn't stop it even if they wanted to. That's the that's the thing. They they are at his mercy. Yeah, that's a very do they're in a very sort of do doomish position. <laughs> they're at the mercy of doom, literally. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Upside. Obviously is the money, because that's what they're worried about, right? Uh, look, the, the first thing is they, they they put a buzz around the Avengers movies again. That's but, that's big. That certainly. buys you a lot. That buys you things. There's no question. But you, we all know this. We have to know this. That with this version of Doom and what they're trying to accomplish is ultimately supposed to be a reset of the, the MCU. Yes. So going in with that is like... You're taking a chance on going down on a really bad note, Brian, to already say, oh, we're going to start all over again anyway, right? To well, that's why back. I still, yeah, that's why I still hold fast to this belief that Kevin Feige is not stupid enough to mortgage the entire future of this franchise on a one and done or two and done Victor Von Doom appearance. I just don't believe it. Which is, makes me suspicious that, like, by the end of the reset, by the, like, it will somehow leave the door open for a a new and true Victor Von Doom to return in some capacity. Because otherwise, that's a hell of a sacrifice. You're taking literally one of the top five, the five most highest profile, meaningful villains you have. And you are wiping him off the board. And unlike Thanos, he had no build. He had no build up. He just got to come in throw 110 miles an hour for two movies and then exit stage left. I think that's a tough thing to do. So I just don't believe Kevin Feige is dumb enough to do that. So I, they, they, 
he has to be building in some sort of back door to where this Von Doom doesn't preclude another Von Doom from combating the Fantastic Four in the future or being involved in whatever next phase think, they've got. Yeah, but I don't think Kevin has a knack for doing back doors, writing back doors, because as we already know, the MCU was built on a chance, on a on, on a let's try this sort of approach. Yeah, no, I, I hear what you're saying, but yeah, it's just... But they're boxing in the character anyway they cut it because Downey's interpretation for... Be- mm-hmm. Like, that's the thing. No one's going to remember the Toby Cavill or the Julian McMahon. Like, nobody's remembering those interpretations. No, right? no, if, I, no. if I asked anyone, like, what did you think about that? They'd be like, who? Yeah, you know? <laughs> so, but Downey's interpretation, good, bad, or mediocre, people are going to remember. Certainly, he, he, but he, again, here's the thing. In those other iterations, Doom was in a mask, and he wasn't not entirely, but he was in a mask, and and with or without the mask, it was it wasn't great. Uh, no, it's poor. <laughs> yeah, with Robert Downey Jr., he could be in and out of the mask, and it could be great or. It has the op- the chance to really disappoint Marvel fans, and that is the key there, Brian. I don't know if MCU exact care about Marvel fans. They most likely care about the casual fans and the 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 you know the people that came to see Robert Downey Jr. and and the stuff that they built over yep. over this 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 tenure. They're, they're banking on that, and and I get it. I get it. I just wanted somebody else, um, because now so, we got to live up to this dude. Yeah. Okay. So other <laughs> other other pieces of upside. Um, so we know, we know, because the Marvel did confirm this, the Fantastic Four is in the next two Avengers movies. Okay. They're in it. Okay. Okay. So we also know that pretty safely, Robert Downey is not in. The Fantastic Four movie, other than maybe the end credits, right? He's not in the movie. So if I was to say, what could be cool? What could be fun? Well, you know, do some de aging, do some flashback. Little Pedro, little younger looking, long, young Pedro Pascal opposite young RDJ when Reed and Victor Von Doom were friends. That I'm interested to see. That I think could be some good filmmaking if you wrote it. Yeah. And presumably that would be more likely in the Avengers movie now than in the Fantastic Four movie. Yeah. So, you know, those are the types of scenes where he's not in the mask, where I could say that's valid and that's interesting. And we actually have not really seen that played out on screen before. So that's that, that take that RDJ takes for this character will be very it'll it'll either keep you on your toes for the very few moments to see where it goes or you'll get a sense immediately like this is not going to work i'm sorry oh if he i'm telling you those first lines if they pop anything in the trailer and you're just like he's he's just doing tony stark but he's I'm, a bad guy I'm, I'm it's out. over it's over like i that's it let's see brian Cause, cause did you see the to this did you see the did you see the leaked fantastic four footage yes so they're fully formed as the yes. fantastic. This is yes. why I'm talking about flashback because we mm-hmm. know beyond a shadow of a doubt, and even if that's test footage, they are fully vo- developed and realized as the first family. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like the only way to have Pascal and RDJ kind of head to head in any sort of you have to go back in time at this point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but It'd be interesting to see like if. You see the Fantastic Four in their headquarters and stuff like that, and you see a fly running, fly um, buzzing around, and that's Victor Von Doom. Usually, that's his mo. Like he has little stuff, video camming everything, so he can see everything. Yeah, well, that's also you know the style of villain here. Uh, if again, I'm searching for how can this work and where can they make it interesting and different is. You know, Thanos is obviously very intelligent, very complex, but he's an incredibly physical foe. Right, huge, you know, impossible almost to, to kill straight up. 
Doom is not really, that's very different, right? Like Doom, it's like, you're more interested in the mental battle. You're more interested in sort of beating the machinations of Doom as much as like any, you don't, almost don't want to see hand to hand with Doom. Like, what's the point of that? Like, I, you know, even if it might have to come to that, I, I feel like I'm much more interested in like wits, right? I want to see, like prove to me Reed is the smartest person on the planet going up against this guy. That is true. But one thing that I've seen often in animation and in cards in, in, in comics is very Dooms is very formidable. Mm -hmm. And I can there's this quote that Fantastic um, Reed says. He's the most dangerous man on the world in the on, on the planet. He, he says something to that effect. That so mm -hmm. there's this dude, the smartest man on the wor world, worried about this dude and what he's thinking and what he's doing. But if I was to draw an analogy, since we're since we've we've moved on from Jonathan Majors, like the best villainous majors is the Loki majors, where it's it's as much a battle of wits as it is a battle of might. The war, the low point to me of the Jonathan Majors Kang experience is the fist fight with Paul Rudd. Yeah, it's just I that's I've no I, like the minute that started, I was like, when is this over? I, I don't <laughs> care at all, and this is a complete waste of Kang's villainy to have him in a hand-to-hand -hand combat with ant-man yeah so that's what i mean it's not that Dean, dune doesn't get his hands dirty it's more that when he makes his entrance it's almost like a darth vader level of kind of power it's like he saves it and then unleashes it yeah yeah so this is, i mean again this is going to be very interesting to see what robert dune, dune is able to pull off with this character if he's able to make us forget about him being tony stark which is going to be quite honestly very, very difficult to do, if not impossible. But if he can make us, at least for a moment, not think about him while he's performing, that'll be the success that he has with this character. Because if he speaks and I'm reminded of the Tony Stark that we used to watch, it's all down here for hill from there I think. movie doesn't work i don't think it works if, 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 if he's a wise cracking villain it does not work no no well, let's see let's see if that is the approach he takes and let's see if someone has the balls to tell him no i think there's this is no not chance it. i think there's no chance no chance of maximus Why? in the tunnel no Why? chance if you're no if you're if, you, if you're the russos and you're behind the camera and you see that are you just letting this ride a hundred percent yes month for months at a time oh man that's a, that's that's yes. the, the, there's just no way they might be they might be like jabbing each other under the table and they're like can't do it, can't do it. the kid great robert that was great <laughs> one more take oh no you're done for the day we're uh, good oh, oh great. my god i hope not man i hope, I, I, I hope i'm sorry i just there's no other when you there's just no other way he knows it He's a he's a smart guy. He knows he has all the leverage. But he's all the leverage. And now the other thing that inevitable is, you know, when is Chris Evans signing? Right? Like, oh, that's yeah, the other yeah, thing. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. he's gonna tell like we know the roster stinks. We know Kevin basically finally told you the roster stinks, right? Can yeah. I just read that quote, by the way? Sure. I know we gotta do the, the that might be a whole other show, but can I just read this <laughs> quote? Because <laughs> it's like if you wanna see a, a coach basically saying my roster is terrible. This is this is Kevin Feige's version of it. Um, because he was talking about the cast for the next Avengers movies. I rarely speak in absolutes like that, right? The notion of never seeing anyone else again. So I never talk in absolutes like that. But the truth is, you know, we're gonna tell a story in these Avengers movies, and there won't be room for a hundred thousand characters in it. So choices will have to be made. That's for sure. <laughs> But that doesn't mean you won't ever see anybody ever again. That's code for my roster sucks. Yeah. I told you. What did I send you after that? The, let the draft begin. Yeah. When we and we should do the actual draft. But it's like when you then hear they already confirmed Fantastic Four is in this movie. And now Robert Downey's Doom. Like all of that is because the Avengers lineup is poor. So which is why they're going to need Cap. They're gonna, like Steve Rogers Cap. They're going to need these other guys somehow to reappear and fight the guy that was on their team and sacrificed himself for the universe even though it's not the same guy they're gonna need to do that and mm -hmm. Hugh and Ryan are in there's no they're all in the movies no question yeah. because they have to be to make it to make it profitable <laughs> this is gonna be very interesting 
I remember that first, uh, after the first show we did after the announcement, you said, let's not bury the leak. This is going, any leaks, reports, or anything coming out of this camp, the MCU, anything have to do with Robert Downey Jr., Avengers, whatever, is going to be the lead story. Yep. So we're going to have a lot of fun for the yeah, next no, few and, and that's years. Upside. That's yes. up, they have event. They have re-eventized two Avengers movies that before they made that announcement, nobody cared about. Yeah. That doesn't they could, mean they're going to be great movies. Yeah, they right? created hype like, out of just, We're just seeing it right now with Deadpool and Wolverine. Not yeah. a great, great movie, but it's an event. Yes. And it's working. That's what they're after. And that's what we said it was it was going to be, event spectacularity. All yeah. this stuff to get people to the, to the theaters, and they're able to do it that way. Still based on the rep. But not of the 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 story that they built over time, which was the thing for me, Brian, that got me to the theaters. So I got to throw in this last note. I know we're up against time here. We did get a, p a small piece of positive news that flew under the radar, although it was a little bit weird. Stephen Marcus is coming back to do the rewrite. Yes. McFeely is not. So they got one of the two. I don't know why they couldn't get the other one. I was like, apparently the apparently the bags that they were leaving around, they were like, wait, we're we're a few million short. <laughs> so McFeely didn't make the cut. I don't know what happened. Anyway, Stephen Marcus is coming back. But one thing that I think will be tested here that we just don't know for sure. We know James Gunn was on that set for Infinity War and Endgame, <clears throat> doing touch-ups, doing rewrites, like doing like, we know that. That was truth. We don't know how much it mattered. We don't know how much of it was being done. We're going to find out, I think, in these two movies. Because you can't accomplish yeah. projects of this scale unless tonally you can successfully link Deadpool and Wolverine with what you're doing in Brave New World and what you're doing, um, you know, with maybe even if you're going to bring in, you know, Fantastic Four, which is like a retro look. Like, that's challenging. If you're trying to do that, if we believe like Rise of the MCU, between Joss Whedon earlier on in the process and James Gunn toward the end, they were kind of ghostwriting, like on set while these movies were being made. Yeah. Who is that person to kind of make sure things don't go off the rails? Because we've kind of seen with the Russos when they don't have the rails. <laughs> mm. Mm. I'll, 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 put, I'll put the email at the bottom of the screen. You can email me right there. I'm, I'm available. I'm available. <laughs> help out with the the task of writing a compelling story right because <laughs> that is the worry that is the worry that the in, the, the variables that were around that yep. time aren't there anymore so we want to get you know, something new yeah but bad news for steven marcus though is that like whatever he writes robert downey's probably going to rewrite it if you want <laughs> I mean, that's just we're gonna see we're gonna see like you know how spike lee's doing written by spike lee produced by spike lee screenplay by Scott. <laughs> it's gonna be like that yo <laughs> if not it should be a joke for deadpool 4. <laughs> um let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of what this Victor Von Doom will bring to the table for the MCU, for the Avengers, for the story that they're trying to do here. I know some of you are very familiar with it, but let us know in the comment section below. Are you guys excited for this next uh, Avengers movies? Are you excited to see RDJ back as Doom after you've had some time to think about this? I know initially was you were like, what? What, what? What's happening? Most people were. The only people that weren't like that are, are the, the, the fans were that were ready to scream for anything. You could have thrown I mean, anybody in that scene. They would have screamed. Yeah, I mean, in fairness, it, it's a perfect Hall H moment. And I still yeah. remember, like, go back and find the reaction when, when they announced um, Dawn of Justice and they put the bat signal behind the Superman logo. Oh, yeah. People lost their minds, Damn. right? Like, look what happened after that. You think those people, like, f still feel great <laughs> about their decision to scream that day? I mean, but that's the point of Hall yeah. H, right? Yeah, it's about yeah, effect. Yeah. It's not about, you know. I would have stood great there shocked, idea. Brian. I would have looked. If you and I were standing in that room, I would have looked at you like, yo, what's going on here? Yo, what's well, this? The moderator, I think Chris Hardwick was the moderator. He did have the proper reaction because he like 
when they did, even though I'm sure he knew it was coming and he's like hamming it up, he goes, what the? Sh-? <laughs> <laughs> you find the thing, he literally just like screams that out. So anyway, but. <laughs> oh, snap. Uh, yeah, let us know in the comments below what you guys think. And remember to hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Report. The show goes on.